Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to the video. Sorry for the break. Um, I was busy working. There was a holiday too that kind of came in. And then I mentioned before, I can't remember if I mentioned it on YouTube, but um, I was having a lot of computer problems. In fact, it's starting to kind of slightly flare up right now. Um, I kind of, I finally isolated what the issue was. I'm not going to get into it here, but anyway, um, I, hopefully by the end of the day today, the computer problems will be over, but that was a big deal. But anyway, so we've got a new wave of fan art. We're going to revisit some of the old fan art. I'm going to give you some ideas for fan art in terms of um, a way that helps me make sure that I show your art and I'm able to credit you easily. So um, anyway, I missed you all very much. I, I'm not just saying that. It's true. But if you're on Patreon, I, I, I freaking hate plugging stuff. Honestly, it's so not my personality. But anyway, I am constantly posting stuff on Patreon. Um, you know, there's multiple uploads uh, a month and there I'm doing a series of videos called core right now There's between six and eight hundred videos up there that you guys can have access to for a dollar It's really freaking cheap. I'd highly recommend checking it out But um, you know, I did a super fun Sunday there um, on JC line decker this past weekend But uh, I try to stay fairly active there um, Is a thank you to them. But anyway, um, so when you send fan art in anything goes I mean in terms of like I've told people this from the get-go uh, what what the the visuals that I've released for Blaster Kid up to this point are really just teasers, and it's not a full reveal of what she looks like, or really even what the story kind of is. It's 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 we were far enough out, and there was too many sort of things in the air that I didn't want to just sort of like lay it out on the table and and not have any surprises. And it's kind of my thing is I like to sort of um, surprise people with what I'm working on, and I work real hard on the down low um, to hopefully impress upon you how hard I do work on my stuff but um anyway when you send the fan art in just play with it you know some people will go well like can I have full reference for things or you know like what's this or what's that just go for it I mean you're 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 not going to hurt yourself doing it you'll get your work shown in a video and then this is the important part is please 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 just send a JPEG. Don't send a PDF. Don't send a PNG. Don't direct message me through Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and send it to me that way. You have to send it to the email address. And I want you to put your name on the JPEG. So when I pull it, I don't have to cross reference or the thing is, is nobody's name is generally their email. So it's like if someone named James well, I'll use James Smith. I wasn't even going to do that. But anyway, James Smith is a friend of mine. What's up, James? Uh, hopefully your piece is in this piece. You're one of the people that, that you send me files that aren't typical JPEGs and they don't open or you instant message me them so you don't follow the rules <laughs> or the recommendation to get the video, the, the piece in. But anyway, um, yeah, you know, like, like uh, you know, whatever we'll say frank smith his email might be some weird thing and then i can't even match up you know what it is so it's just easiest name name your piece your name you know and uh then i can credit you in the video but if for some reason your video shows up i mean your piece shows up in this video i haven't credited you just uh please put it in the comment section below say hey from one minute in to you know, minute and a half, my art is here. So anyway, this is this is the first piece. This is from Zankri, and it's really really cool. I I I love it. I mean, it's such a fun piece. The colors are beautiful. The drawing is really neat. Um, it's got cool mood and atmosphere, and um, a logo, <laughs> and even some some dialogue. So it's it's cool, and that's actually like a cool little word balloon. I like that. Don't be afraid, friend. We've been here before. You've just forgotten. So anyway, I love it. I think it's awesome. So some of the pieces that we're going to see in this video are, are pieces that I've shown before. Oh, and this was the other recommendation. If for some reason at some point you've sent me Blaster Kid fan art and it hasn't made it into a video thus far, please just email it again to the email address. It'll be in the description box. You can. Um, you don't even have to say, "Hey, you missed my piece." Just send it in, have it labeled, uh, and it'll get in. Um, you know, probably the next video that I do. So um, it's it's you know it's just one of those things that I was trying to go through. It, it, the worst thing that I can do is check my email on my phone because then the message generally won't be highlighted when I go back into my computer where I pull them. So sometimes that's what ends up happening is I see it on my phone. Um, and then, uh, it looks like I've already read the email. 
So, all right, let's keep rolling. Now, this one we've shown before. This was in one of the very, very first. And there's actually, I think, a few coloring samples in here, too. I was going to try to do a video where I actually sp spotlit a lot of the people that did uh, samples for the original um, sort of talent search for colors. In fact, let me shut this palette um, um, but, uh, yeah, so this is from Paul Paulus is his name. And, uh, we've seen this piece before. It's very, very cool. Like it's, I kind of call it like a somber moment with the kid <laughs> kid. What's wrong. She's like, I'm giving up this life of adventure for, um, I'm going to be an influencer. <laughs> no, don't do it, kid. <laughs> All right. We don't call our kid in the book. Maybe sometimes who knows? Maybe it's an anagram killer in disguise <laughs> all right this is cool so this one is michael michael mobs mobs we've seen this one before this is cool she's on a motorcycle was actually um the last couple of days i've been really pouring through um art of video game books and uh i love looking at those types of books and it was giving me lots of ideas for for just fun stuff because there's so many iterations of vehicles and guns and costumes and colors and terrain and all this stuff and it's just so fun to see even if it doesn't i i there was i was looking at something i was like man this is so not what blaster kid would be like but it was cool to see and it also i think um so this one's from dylan what's up dylan um and uh yeah, sometimes seeing stuff that even doesn't really relate to what you're working on can be uh, helpful because you go, okay, well, I definitely, not that you want to avoid it, but you know what I mean? Like, um, it, it gives you, um, in your mind, I think, uh, uh, distinctions, which is important, you know? I've heard this as a recommendation or I came up with it myself, but, but, uh, I think, you know, when you don't like someone's art, it's important to understand why you don't like it. So this one is done by Kevin. I'll just use first names f uh, for the video, just so I don't mispronounce some of the tougher names. But anyway, um, we've seen this one before. This is very, very cool. And, uh, you know, thank you very much, Kevin. I appreciate it. It's funny because although it wasn't intentional when I did it, I mean, definitely at times, especially when I see other people drawing it, it, it gives me a moment to sort of separate myself from the original idea. Um, and, uh, it'll look sometimes like uh, lady Tron from wildcats or zealot really, honestly, neither one of those, I would say maybe lady Tron just in a weird abstract way was an influence on it, but it, neither character really was what I was going for. Blaster kid came up completely out of the blue um, and then just, you know, she was bald originally. I, I had uh, the first couple of drawings I did of her, she had no hair. Um, but I thought that that was a little too out there for probably like normal <laughs> normies, <laughs> normies that collect comics. So this is Kier Covington. Kier did, a, I think, a color version. Kier's done quite a few actual um, fan art pieces of, of Blaster Kids. So I really appreciate it. But this is another nice one. Kier's stuff is very, very detailed. So... <clears throat> Thank you, Kier. This is a good one. Yeah, it's really, really cool. Uh, oh, okay, I guess this is the pencils. I was like kind of tripping. I was like, this looks fairly similar to the other one. He, I, I'm nearly sure he has a colored version too. Okay, let's continue. This is Jorge. This is cool. Uh, we've seen this one, I believe, before, too. Yeah, this one is really interesting. It's it's very, very, like, um, I don't know what you call it. Like, almost like it almost feels embossed to me, like the, the digital effect on it. It's kind of interesting. It reminds me a little bit of some of the stuff that Dreamwave would do, where it's it's not like cell animation, but there's a little bit of that sort of vibrancy and, and kind of depth um, to it. But this is cool. I like all this is neat. Okay. James. See, this one I had to do as a screenshot because James doesn't follow the freaking rules. Shame on you, James Windsor Smith. <laughs> James has another one that hopefully I made it in. Like I said, he sends me like these weird iterations. Now he should be on point though. So send them to the email address is JPEGs, not some weird alternate JPEG. JPEG 2 or something. 
then, then you have to open it in another program and save it again. It's, I mean, I know the workaround for it, but I ain't going to spend that much time on it. <laughs> All right. This is, shoot, see this one. Well, it says Stitch. So, um, again, my apologies for the ones that don't have names. And it's possible that maybe, like, I just, just so that uh, I'm respectful for the people that did send them in. It is possible that um, you, you did name the file um, and somehow it just got changed. But, uh, yeah, try to make a point of just naming the JPEG uh, your name. You can write Blaster Kid on it if you want, but uh, this is cool. <clears throat> I like the the whole motorcycle thing. It's she doesn't have a motorcycle in the first book, but it's it's fun to see her on a choppa. <laughs> they wish they had motorcycles. <laughs> Trust me. Oh yeah, I remember this one. So this I is this this might be Kier too actually. Yeah, this is Kier. So Kier did this one in a different style, the Mignola look. It's interesting, you know. It, it's fun. I mean, I've never really fantasized about other people, uh, professionals, drawing Blaster Kid, to be honest. Although, I mean, I know that David Finch has expressed interest and people have asked me, you know, they've requested artists that they would like to see do do it. But, uh, yeah, you know, Mignola's, I love Mike Mignola's stuff. He's really one of my favorite, favorite artists. So thank you again, Kier. This is great. There's There uh, there will be a black and white version of this. Oh, yeah, this is cool. So this one, is this Kier too? I think this is Kier too. Kier, you've done a lot of Blaster Kid fan art. This might, this this video might be Kier. Kier, the Kier video. <laughs> this is cool too. I guess this is like a Frank Miller style. You could have actually done a little bit of splatter on this. It would have looked cool, like a little bit of splatter hitting the gun in some spots or maybe off of her head. <clears throat> it would have looked neat, too. Yeah, thank you, Kier. All right, so let's continue. And this is Kier, too. Damn, Kier, is, he's a busy bee. This is, you know, the thing is, though, is, is, look, take a page out of this guy's book, and I'm not talking about that you need to be, like, sending me tons of fan art. But, but if you want to get good at drawing, I mean, this is sort of the commitment that you have to have for it is you just need to get down and dirty and be drawing all the time. You know, it's, it's the, that hustle and, um, aggressive quality will help you, um, you know, move forward with it. So this is David Knight. We've seen this piece before too. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece. I mean, this is like a work of art. It's so just, man seeing stuff like this was really beyond what I ever imagined. I mean, in terms of like other people interacting with like the world, like, like again, it wasn't, I, I just think that I never, I never really, when you're working on something like this and you're making something up and you're writing it or you're designing it or whatever, you don't, I don't know. I just never went like, man, someday someone's going to do like a piece of, of this, you know? Then you start seeing it, and it really is like you go, man, that's so cool. It's really, really awesome. So thank you, David. It's beautiful. And this is Chauncey, my man Chauncey. I love Chauncey. Chauncey's Busy Bee, too. He did he did um, Fragtober. No one does Inktober anymore. That guy, he buried himself. <laughs> I, I sometimes wonder, though, when people change the name, if they're changing it because of um, the controversy around him. Or if they just uh, wanted to sort of personalize it, but uh, yeah, I like the gun. The gun's actually really cool. This this part in particular is really neat. <clears throat> and he's got his Micron O1. That's a classic. I use that. I would say O1 is my favorite. O05 used to be my favorite. And here's another Chauncey. Awesome. Thank you, Chauncey. Again, some of these we've seen before. Not a big deal though. Like like, I I, I just really don't mind. You know re um showing the stuff for people you know if it gets a little traffic you know and that's the other thing too is by all means if you watch this video and you have art in this um you know plug plug yourself in the comments say hey i've got a youtube channel here or you can follow me on instagram under this name it's totally fine now the one thing is youtube sometimes will bury that stuff the one trick that i found is like a workaround for it is if you click on newest messages first sometimes it'll pull up hidden messages sometimes they're hidden to me too i'll see like i'll have a notification that says there's 11 comments and i go and there's like five you know and then i click you know newest first um and uh it'll pull up ones that have things that youtube flags is like a link so this is victor 
I've known Victor online for a few years now, and uh, he was a patron, or is a patron, and uh, yeah, it's really cool, Victor. Thank you so much. I was trying to remember if you colored this one. Oh, you did. I thought so. And here's the colors. Really cool. I think I, I said this in the other video, but I did a piece that I penciled and Jim Lee inked for EverQuest. It was um, Mayong Mistmore. He's kind of like um, a drow elf vampire. And um, I kind of did something like this with them. There's like water and like I think a knight or something coming towards them. And he's standing on this like um, sort of pedestal in the water, like beckoning the guy to come forward. Actually, I did two versions of it in pencil and have the other one that's never been inked. Um, so every once in a while I come across it. But yeah, it was like, I penciled it and Jim Lee inked it. It was kind of cool. All right, so this is Alan. What's up, Alan? Thank you so much. I feel like we might have seen this one before, but it's possible that we didn't. But uh, I definitely, I had a few new ones that came in that are in this video or should be. I tried to be careful when I opened the folder to count. Because like I said, some files, even if they're JPEGs, will like I don't know what it is. I'm I'm on Photoshop CS6. I'm not gonna pay Photoshop for CC right now. Um so all my heroes were using Photoshop CS6 anyway. And even CS3 people were getting killer results, so I'm fine with this. So this is Adi. Adi, this is really cool. We've looked at this one before. I love the colors on it. It's very, very contemporary. The whole the whole concept behind it is actually very, very cool. It's just an interesting take on her. The canisters on her body are really neat too, and and uh, I like actually like the symmetry of it. It's 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 really neat. It's funny because it's it almost has a little bit of like um like a tiki tiki art kind of vibe to it because a lot of times they'll sort of almost have like the mirror image of things and uh can look really cool but yeah i really love the colors the way you color the canisters is great really really cool so thank you this was a color sample this one i don't have the name on it so i apologize but uh this guy did i think three or four samples he did a few they were interesting it was really wild like i, w I was like man this is some crazy stuff um there's another person that did it traditionally with watercolor too that was was really interesting but we'll get to that i i was looking really hard i had to transfer everything off my computer so you have to understand that when i was having the computer problems i had to back up everything just in case my computer was going to completely go down because i didn't really know what was going on it's it was my graphics drivers were having a conflict um with another monitor that i have i finally i like i'm figuring this out still i had 25 days of it being fine switched to the other monitor and then the problems immediately came back um i'm trying to make sure they're gone now but anyway but uh yeah i want to do a video of uh, more of the color samples too so this is james this is um uh, James Smith did this one. This is really cool. This one didn't make it into the last video because the file was weird. So I had to resave it as, uh, I don't know, another file. Well, I know what I had to save it as, but it, yeah, it wasn't opening as a JPEG. So anyway, but it's really, really cool, James. You did a great job on this. James is, uh, he had two strokes about two years ago. He was just recovering from the first one. He had a second stroke. And um, he's he's drawing, he's learning Clip Studio Paint now, and uh, he's on his way. So, good for you, James. You're kicking ass. I'm proud of you. Proud of you. I met James on DeviantArt. I said in a Patreon video that uh, I'm a man of the people. Before that was like a hip thing and, and a sales tactic, I was out there. But I met James on DeviantArt probably 12 years ago. This was a color sample. So this is Phil. Phil, thank you so much for this. This is really, really cool. The atmosphere in the sky is so creepy. Could you imagine? It was really foggy here. It actually, you know what? It's still really foggy at my house right now. I can't even see probably four houses away. But I can't even imagine being in a world where I would have to walk through a sky like this. It would be so freaking scary. And can you imagine the, the mental sort of... Uh, like how what it would do to the people that lived in that world this would be a messed up place so thank you <laughs> you nailed it no all not all blaster kid is dark and scary it would never work that way it would it would be it would get boring having it be all 
creepy and spooky. You have to have variety. This is from Odin Dasko, and it's really, really cool. I love, man, people have so much fun with the the bandoliers. I would definitely say, though, that, that, that I got this, the bullet idea, I think, although I can't, I, I'm not 100% sure if he ever drew them, but uh, Stephen Platt. But again, I, 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 there was no specific drawing that I could think of. I just, I know that S Stephen Platt was really famous for lots of bullets. Like you'd have the shell casings everywhere, but I don't know if he ever put this on him. But just the way that I assimilated the memory was, I was, I wanted, you know, like of those I early image artists. I think the there, there's a few that I could point out as maybe like um, stylistic influences would be. Um, uh, like Jim Lee on Death Blow, uh, Stephen Platt, Jay Lee, and then like Nick Manabat for the dark, the dark stuff. Now I have many, many influences that are way more contemporary um, that have nothing to do with even comics at all. But but I I definitely think that some of the aesthetic for Blaster Kid comes from that, and then Travis too, of course. But Travis Travis doesn't really draw creepy like those guys, but. Uh, yeah, those are probably like the five or six like comic influences, um, and then like I said, there's twenty five years of other shit that I've looked at. Which if, if you follow me on here, you know. All right, so this is Michael. Michael, this one is awesome. I remember this piece. This is really really cool, man. This looks like it's ready to go to like an animation studio right now, and and, and uh, print it and send it out. I like the little bit of light. I, I mentioned too that, that one of the original ideas that I had that I actually 86 at least for now was um, she was going to actually travel with a little something or other like a robotic thing um, you know I had it initially as an orb and I thought that that was a little too generic and kind of predictable and, and kind of placed it in a time and place for I don't know like cyberpunk from like four or five years ago so it it, it it didn't work and I tried to come up with other ideas that I thought might be interesting. Oh, this is the watercolor piece. So this is actually traditionally colored in watercolor. Um, this was one of the color samples that I got. You know, I would not be opposed to Brass Blaster Kid at some point being colored by hand like something like this, but um, the for I mean, I have a very distinct um, idea of what I want the book to look like and uh, this definitely wasn't wasn't what I was going for right now but I think you could do some beautiful stuff like this I mean it really reminds me of something like you know Mobius um, or you know something along the lines of that might might do with uh, some of his ideas I mean I plan on drawing Blaster Kid literally until I'm pushing up dirt so I mean it's I have other things that I want to work on but uh, I mean Blaster Kid's not going anywhere. So this was one of the new pieces of fan art. I, in fact, I think that this just came in um, maybe a day or two ago, which was which um, inspired me to um, sort of fast track this video. So this is from Yosep. Yosep, thank you. I like it. The, the quote is funny too. I like it. Um, but uh, yeah, this is really really cool. It's really fun. The the this is awesome. I, I've said in so many videos that I need to up my gun game. It's it's the one thing that that um, I I just am determined to be able to draw kick ass guns for Blaster Kid for for all the characters that are in it. Okay, so we saw this one already. Thank you again, Odin. And this is a new one too, and it's not and it's not named. But he in in this person's benefit and defense, um, they just turned this in and may not have have understood that. I, I'm not gonna I think it says Cole but but um, you know by all means uh, just let me know in the comment section that it's yours and um, you know it, it's fine but yeah moving forward please 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 name your um, fan art the JPEG so it doesn't come up as image 3162 um, it'll really really help me be able to um, promote your work but this is really cool the city is interesting I mean that's like another thing that you have to design which was um, it was fun looking at those um, art of video game books uh, yesterday for a bit um, is seeing different ways that people well you know, these designers that do these, you know, triple a video games design the worlds. I mean, you know, the like, like how far in the future is it? Is it on earth? You know, I t I've talked about this before. I'm not going to get into the, to the specifics of blaster kid, but it, it is all stuff that, cause people ask me like, how do you, how do you do a creator own book? I mean, you have to you have to understand that is it on earth when does it take place 
does it because it, the thing is is we don't we we can speculate on on where the earth was at you know a million years ago or a million years in the future what it might be like or whatever you know what i mean whatever the parameters are but it, it's it's like you know if you have a character like this just just at a surface level uh, do, can they can they fly into space? Can they get to another planet? Is there other life in their solar system? You know, I mean, it's all stuff that you have to kind of consider. Is there magic? Is there the force? You know, so you know, not not all books are um, this this genre, but uh, it, it all. It, it is all things that you have to consider, but don't get bogged down on it. You just want to like, honestly, grab a notebook and just write down ideas. And eventually what ends up happening is the story tells you what's realistic. Like when I was, when I was doing the final pass of the script for Blaster Kid, there were scenes that, that, that I wanted to do that you, you know, you would kind of go, well, you know, do they have that technology? How would this area exist in the world that that I've created around it? Is this plausible that 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 there there would still be this little, you know, cove of some, whatever whatever is going on? You know, like is that is that does that make sense with everything that's gone on in the world to get it to this point? So you know, you you just work around all this stuff. You know, I think any anyone that's writing or world world building does it. So this is Rob Stillwell. This is cool. This is. I, I had it listed as not shown yet, and I don't know if that necessarily means that it never made it into a video or if it was not shown in the last video. Like I said, when I did the last fan art video, um, you know, there's maybe 20 some odd, 20 to 30 files in a folder. Not all of them opened when I grabbed them and opened them. And so some didn't make it to the video that I noticed, but this is great. I mean, this is like heavy duty, just badassery, really, really fun piece. Would be awesome to see it inked. It would be awesome to see it colored. So you know, and and even this like the sketch stuff in the background is really interesting. Like I don't know if this is weaponry on her back or if it's actually like maybe like a destroyed building that was gonna s sort of go back here. But it's it's all really really interesting. I like your line work too. Like like how you're actually like rendering the lines and stuff like that. It's pretty pretty badass. So thank you, Rob. Really really cool. This piece was new. So this is Graphico. Graphico is a patron of mine. And he's taking um, uh, reviews or lessons. I, sorry, I, I I almost consider them the same thing in my mind. Just some are shorter and some are longer. But this piece is awesome. It remind I told him it reminded me a little bit of like a Patrick Nagel piece. But this is like highfalutin blaster kid. She's all pretty and she's got like... This gun reminds me, uh, old school Dungeons and Dragons fans will know what I'm talking about, but Search for the Barrier Peaks, they had weapons that um, kind of look like this in the, um, the mod, like the, whatever you call it, the module. <laughs> it's pretty cool. But this is awesome. I love this piece. I think it's so freaking cool. It's really, really neat. And there was, uh, Danny Earls sent me a piece, and I wanted to get it in the video, but I didn't have time to take a photo of it, but uh, he actually sent me an original. It's it's really nice. Um but uh, I'll get that in a future video. Like I said, I've been it's been a little chaotic with all the computer crap I was dealing with. This is cool. So this is um, Granat Granda, and he did an awesome job. I feel like I think we've shown this one before, but uh, it's really really cool. Really really cool. All of these, like honestly, look like they like I I would I would encourage all of you to color them. I, I just think that, like, they look so good in black and white, but, man, they would also look so badass in color. So it's pretty neat. It's it's exciting to know that it can, it, you know, that both are exciting. I mean, we've seen this one before. This is uh, Landon. So Landon, luckily, had his, he wrote his name clearly on the piece, so it saves me from um, this, uh, like, the naming of it. But yeah, this is awesome. She looks intense, man. This reminds me of uh, when I was a kid. I would read these books called the the, the Shannara Tales, Sword of Shannara, Elf Stones of Shannara. They were kind of like they were written by Terry Brooks, who ended up doing a lot of Star Wars stuff over the last like I don't know thirty years. Um, but uh, they had uh, Hildebrandt um, spot illustrations in the books, and it kind of reminds me of like like that. It doesn't look like a Hildebrandt piece, but but uh, it gives me that vibe. A little bit but yeah it's cool lots of detail in the foliage and then here's the last one for this video and again if for some reason you've sent fan art and it has not made it into a video please just resend it 
you, like I said, you don't even need to explain it. Just send it to me, and I'm going to create a new folder that will be called December 2021 Blaster Kid Fan Art. And we'll hit this every few weeks or, or you know, whenever whenever we get a new stack of them together. And then what, what, like, what I'm going to do, too, is, like I said, I'm, I'm going to try to find um, the color samples that people send in so that they can get a little bit of exposure for that. And hopefully, um, uh, at the very least, they'll be able to credit themselves um, in the comments section so these videos aren't going anywhere they're going to be up forever so at any point when someone finds them they can always look down in the comment section and find you and where you're at online so you know all right so this is from aleska aleska this is awesome it's really really cool i again i i've seen this piece for a while since you sent it and so i feel like i've shown it before but i may or may not have in a video but it's really really cool it's it's super awesome i actually like how you break up the lines and not everything like there's a, a suggestive quality to things it really gives it a sense of um kind of action and motion and stuff like that and uh it's really really cool so all right I can't thank you all enough for doing Blaster Kid art. It's incredibly humbling and was honestly very unexpected. And, and I mean that, that, that it's just, I never thought that, that I, you know, I mean, when you make, like I said, I mean, I made this up years ago on DeviantArt, just out of the blue one day, I drew something and kind of went like, that's Blaster Kid. <laughs> and, uh. I did a couple of pieces of her, and uh, that was kind of it for a while. And and uh, yeah, it's just so trippy to to see it all evolving into you know something that's a tangible world and character. And I'm really excited for you guys to see the other characters and stuff like that. So uh, I I gave a little bit of an update on um, Patreon, but I still have not talked to Kelsey. I, I mean, I I don't want to get like super into it but i haven't spoken to him in almost three months it's actually over three months now i don't know what's going on so i you know as i said on the patreon video i hope everything is okay with him i don't know i mean the last conversations that we had were right after the hurricane and you know i've been keeping in touch with him as the hurricane was heading towards his area and saying like you, know, you guys gonna be okay and he was north of far enough north of it that that wasn't gonna cream his house as bad as the coast um and everything was totally fine and normal and then it's just i haven't been able to get in touch with him i've called him i've texted him um uh, sent emails twitter the whole thing so i don't know what's going on with kelsey but what i did over the last three or four weeks is um i basically taught myself how to color i did i did a couple of pretty hardcore tutorials i've i mean i've been in photoshop for years so it's not like i'm not familiar with photoshop as i said in the Patreon video, I, I understand lighting and color. In fact, I used to get a lot of compliments on it at Wildstorm when I would just draw on my own. They would they, There was certain natural abilities I have. I don't have the experience of a professional colorist, but um, I mean, as it stands right now, I mean, I'm hoping that Kelsey sort of pops back up, but I mean, if I don't hear from him in another month or two, I, I don't, you know, I'm gonna color it myself, which was, eventually going to be what what was going to happen with blaster kid anyway because kelsey's got his own books and things that he's working on um and so i kind of knew that probably by the third issue of blaster kid i'd be coloring it myself unless kelsey wanted to stay on board but um yeah so i, I don't know i don't know what's going on i don't know what to tell you but anyway i already i already had the color concepts for the first issue fully done i mean i know exactly what every scene should should be colored you know in a ballpark like i don't, I don't want to get into specifics but yeah so anyway we'll see how it goes but uh, anyway all right i'll talk to you guys later have a great day bye